people who aren't here, and I'm going to try to upload it. I have a feeling my computer is going to tell me that I don't have enough memory and it's not going to work, but we'll see what happens. So um, the way that we want to start the one-point perspective, um, you want to have a ruler when you're doing this because the lines need to be pretty straight, especially if you're drawing buildings. Um, buildings are not organic in shape. They are very rigid with corners and straight lines. And if your building is off even just a little bit, it's going to look very strange in the picture. It's going to throw everything off. So probably the most important thing to think about with one point perspective um, is that every angle needs to match up and, and it needs to be accurate or it's going to throw off the whole drawing. Um, like I said today, we're going to start just very simply. Um, if, you're, if you're doing a one point perspective scene, you're going to have things coming up from the ground. So you're going to need a horizon line, um, the line that separates ground from sky. I have my sketchbook turned horizontally. I think it's gonna work best if you guys do horizontal sketches today, just so we have a little bit more length to work with. Um, we wanna start by putting our horizon line somewhere roughly in the center of the page. Um, doesn't have to be exact for this, but we wanna make sure that um, actually, wait, before we do that, no, haha, <laughs> I fooled you. Um, we want to go from corner to corner first. Um, and then there'll be, it will create a natural vanishing point that we can make a horizon line from. Now, you probably notice my ruler doesn't reach all the way down to the corner. There's a good chance that yours won't either. Um, so for this step, if you want to just forego the ruler and try to draw as straight as you can from one corner of your page, Dang, that's not going to show up. Let's see if I go darker. You should draw lightly for this step. Um, I'm going to have to draw kind of dark because the document camera doesn't like to pick up pencil lines very well. Um, so we're going to go from corner to corner and then do the same thing on the other side. And that's going to create an X in your paper. It also creates a center point. Um, now, if you wanted to, once you've drawn your basic lines out, you could take your ruler and line it up from the corner to that vanishing point and straighten it even more. We want to make sure, though, that we're going through this vanishing point center the whole way down. Um, what may end up happening is that you're, to keep your line straight, it doesn't hit the corner exactly. It might go off the side of the page a little bit. Um, that isn't the end of the world if that happens. It's okay. Um, the main thing is that we need these lines to be straight. And so even if it doesn't match up with a corner perfectly, that's okay. If you have a longer ruler, you're lucky because then you can go right from corner to corner right from the beginning and it's not going to change anything. So you start with your giant X through your paper, then you need to create that horizon line. So you wanna lay your ruler so that it's going through that dot that your X created. Um, it needs to be exact at this point. It has to go right through the dot. We can't create new points on our lines here. Um, a common mistake I see when I do this with younger kids is their ruler is down here somewhere and then it ends up making a triangle shape. Um, and we, we don't want to have extra points on these two lines. We want everything coming to this center point. That is going to be your vanishing point. And so vanishing point is the farthest away that we can see on our horizon line. And everything looks like it's angling back towards that point. Um, there's probably more stuff back there beyond, but we don't see it. It's too far away. Um, same thing with our horizon line. That is as far away as we can see. Everything else is disappearing beyond the horizon line. Um, so these lines that we've created now are going to be our basic lines that we're going to use to create buildings or whatever else might, might go in our picture. Um, if you have an eraser with you and you want to erase this line that is, was the mistake line or was our guideline to start with, you can go ahead and do that. Um, it might throw you off if you have extra lines there. So that's why I asked you to draw lightly when you start this because um, a, lot of, a lot of these beginning lines that we make are going to get erased in some fashion later on. So what we want to do next is just lay out some tall vertical buildings in this scene. Um, but it's going to look a little bit more interesting if you have your buildings at a variety of heights rather than just one height um, and one height over here. 
technically we could call this one city block and this one city block and this is our road and we're pretty much done. Um, but I'm going to show you how you can fairly easily get a, a different variety of heights in this scene. Um, so what we want to do is just lay our ruler again at our vanishing point and then we're just going to put it in different spots um, in between these sections keeping the center at the vanishing point every time but usually I divide it into like three different sections. They don't have to be perfectly spaced. Um, however, when you're working on your final drawing, you may wish to actually lay this out into like a grid, um, mark inch by inch, so that you can have perfect spacing in between. Um, for today, we don't need to do that because this is kind of just practice, but I'm gonna lay my ruler out and draw just a few more guides. Um, I'm not going to do it at the bottom because this is bottom of the building and so that's probably all going to wind up in the same spot along the sidewalk. You may want one that goes up into the sky um, towards off the top of your sketchbook. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side. Making sure my ruler is at the vanishing point. Um, that is the most important thing in this project. So it kind of looks like a spider web now or like flying through warp speed or um, maybe power lines along the road. But we have a few different heights now in this building um, or this block, I guess. So what we need to do now is draw vertical lines um, and we want them to be perfectly straight. Some of my students, when I do this with younger grades, wind up having lines that tip in towards the vanishing point or maybe tip this way. Um, we want our ruler to be parallel to the side edges of our paper. Um, it's not going to work very well with this spiral to just line it up with the bottom edge of your page, but that's another way that you could kind of cheat and do it. So um, you want to make sure that it's just parallel with the side of your page. And then we're going to just decide how large this first building is going to be. Um, the first building is what we're standing closest to. We can imagine that we're down here somewhere at the bottom of our road. So what we're seeing along the side edges are the tallest. They look the largest. They're going to have the most detail because we're closest to them. Um, so I'm going to lay my ruler parallel to the side of my page. And then I can start at my bottom line and just decide how high I want my building to be. Um, we want to make sure we go up taller than the horizon line that's right in the center of your page. We need to be taller than that line uh, because otherwise our buildings would be so short they're, they're just like the same level with the ground. We want them to go up into the sky a little bit. So you could stop either at your first guideline, could go up to your second guideline and stop, or all the way up to your third guideline if you want to. Um, I think for my first building, I'm going to have it be in the center guideline. So it's not quite as tall as some of the other buildings on the block, but it's, it's also not as short either. That could be potentially this low. Um, so that's where I'll stop with my line. And then sometimes I tell my students to just kind of darken this line just a little bit so you know that that is your top of your building, if that helps you. If not, just remember that this is your building top. So then we're going to go to the next building over, just sliding our ruler over keeping it vertical, parallel with the side of our page, um, and decide how tall the next building is going to be. Now, we're getting farther away, so this building might not be as wide as the first one. Um, it might be just a little bit more narrow looking, and that is an optical illusion, so in real life it could actually be wider than this one, but it looks more narrow. Um, so I'm going to go up to, this time, I'm going to go all the way to my top line. So then I know that this is the rooftop for this building, but then I'm presented with a problem over here because the side of this building needs to come down and meet up with this side. So I can put my ruler back over there again and continue that line up. Want to make sure that we stay on the same edge. So now I have a tall building and then one that's slightly smaller. Now, with buildings that are taller than the ones beside them, we're going to see just a little bit of the side of the building over here. Um, so what you should do if you have a building that's taller than the, the previous one, sides are going to be parallel to the top and the bottom of the paper. So they're straight horizontal lines. Um, so you want to match up with this point 
and try to get your ruler parallel to top and bottom of page. You could actually measure if you wanted to to make sure it's perfect, but for today, I just want to keep things moving, so I'm going to guess with it. But um, So now I can see that I have a side of my building, and then that disappears behind this one. So this is the first building, second building, and this strange angle is the roof in the front of the building. So these would be the storefronts, and then these are just sides of building. Um, it's kind of going to look a little strange for a while when you're doing one point perspective until you get them all laid out and are able to start erasing some of these other lines. Um, so don't worry about it if you think it looks a little weird. Is everybody caught up to this point? We doing okay? Not going too fast? All right, great. Um, so now we're just going to continue all the way back to our vanishing point, adding other buildings in here. Um, again, we want them to be, we want the sides to be vertical and they can go to any one of these heights, just so it's past the horizon line. And I think I'm going to make my last building be the same height that my first one was. So I'm going to need to go up there. And then over here. As you get towards the vanishing point, it's going to be very hard to keep making buildings. So I usually wind up with about four or five of them on each page. Um, so now that I have this kind of laid out, I want to make sure that I remember which buildings are tall, which buildings are a little bit shorter. So I'm going to darken my rooftops. And then I see that this one needs to show a side. This one does not because it's shorter. So the side is hidden behind this building that's beside it. Um, now at this point, I usually tell my students, if you want to erase the leftover diagonal that's up here in the sky, the very tallest one, um, the parts that we're not using anymore, you can go ahead and erase that. What did I do with my pencil that has an eraser? Hmm. Um, we don't want to erase inside the buildings, though, these guidelines yet, because those can later be used as windows and doors. There it is. So I'll just go ahead and erase this one. And then this one is floating through the sky. My building is shorter than it, so it won't be used for windows and doors, so I can erase that line too. Is it showing up okay on the projector? Those of you in the back can see it all right? Okay. Um, looks like this line's not quite matched up. All right, so um, I'm going to hold off on windows and doors for a second and let you guys go over and fill in the buildings on the other side that we haven't done. If you want to copy what I'm doing, I'm fine with that. If you want to just pick your own heights and sizes. Um, they don't need to be exactly the same as the left side of the street. They can be very different. But we do want to make sure that we keep doors and windows roughly the same height on both sides. Let me get that far. So the reason that we want to make them different heights is because it's just going to make our picture look a little bit more interesting to have um, this skyline that isn't totally straight. And I could have gone even taller if I wanted to. You could have buildings that are going off the top of the paper. Um, if you do that, though, you want to make sure you have some that stay lower as well so you have that broken up skyline space. So um, the few of you that said you needed to bug out early today, looks like my recording is still working, so I'm going to try to upload this to my UJ. Um, if not, we'll, go, we'll do a review on Monday. So. Okay, now I need... So on this side... Um, it's going to be just like opposite or reflected of this side. So buildings will be have parallel lines if, if you don't see the tops anymore. Um, looks like this one. I'm going to keep that as the top and the side. So this one, I would need to have my parallel line. It works pretty well to do this project using grid paper also. Um, I, I wanted you to keep it in your sketchbook, but if you have grid paper at home and you want to practice this more, 
that works pretty well for you. Erase that one, then this one needs a parallel line. Sometimes you might need to adjust your buildings if they look a little weird. Like when I'm looking at these two, I kind of don't like how this side matches almost with this one's corner. So if I wanted to correct that, I could just extend my building so that it's a little bit wider, um, redraw that line. Let me erase this one because it's up in the sky. We don't need it anymore. And this one I don't need back here. And this one down here, I'm going to erase. Oops. All right, something like that. Pretty good. Um, don't worry about it if you're not quite done filling in your buildings. You can go back and do this a little bit later. Um, I want to show you windows and doors yet today, too. Um, and then just a few things that you could do to add even more detail to these buildings. So um, let's see, what time are we at? Cool. Um, so for windows and doors, they are going to work much like tops and bottoms of buildings. So they're going to need to angle towards the vanishing point. Um, anything that's on the front of these buildings, these storefronts, needs to angle towards vanishing point. So windows and doors would be parallel to rooftops and floors, need to angle to vanishing point. Um, so the easiest way to add those windows and doors in here is to just create more guidelines, like what we did to make our rooftops. Um, windows and doors should all be roughly the same height. You wouldn't want to see a door that's this tall on this building but only like small like this one over here. That would be quite different. I don't know if you can see those scribble lines, probably not. So what we wanna do first is determine how tall the door is going to be on these buildings. Um, that is up to you. They could be as small or as tall as you want them to be. Um, if you have doors that go all the way up to your horizon line, that's just fine, you can. Um, it just means that they're going to be pretty wide, so they're going to take up most of the front of these buildings, and it's going to make your buildings look shorter if you have very large doors. Um, if you decide to make a guideline that comes out from your vanishing point um, about halfway, cutting these to this section in half, and have your doors come up this tall, um, it's going to make your buildings look more like skyscrapers. So now suddenly the buildings have three or four stories versus two. Um, that's usually what I like to do is a door that's about halfway between your, your floor and your horizon line. And like I said with this one, you're going to want them about the same size on each side of your paper. So you can go ahead and make the same guideline over on the right side as you did on the left. Um, and then you're going to be thinking about where windows are going to go. Um, so if you want to draw your doors in first, you can do that. Um, doors, the sides of them are going to be parallel with the sides of your paper. So they are straight vertical lines. And some of your buildings might have double doors, so they might be a little bit wider. This one looks like it might be a double door. Um, make a smaller door on this building. If you have a transparent ruler, that really comes in handy for this project so you can see exactly how far you're spaced away from your sidewalls and things. But um, since this is just a practice one, I'm not going to get too worried about things being exactly the same width. We just want to really try to make sure they're vertical when they need to be and angled towards vanishing point when needed to be. So now I have just a couple of doors in my building. Um, now I'm going to think about where windows would go in relation to these doors. Um, some storefronts are going to have just tiny windows. So we may have a guideline. I'm going to draw my guidelines pretty light right now because most of this will get erased. I'm really hoping you can see it up on the screen. 
not very well, it looks like. Okay, I'll draw mine darker, but please keep yours light because um, most of it will need to be erased eventually. So there's one guideline. So my window might sit, the bottom of my window might be on this guide. I'm going to erase it where it's cutting through the doors already because I don't want to see that in the doors. It's going to confuse me. So if you have a transparent ruler, you wouldn't have to draw it through your doors. You could pick up your line as it's cutting across. Um, so this would be where the bottom of my windowsill would go. Um, now I need to figure out where the top of that windowsill is going to be. So again, ruler back at my vanishing point and create another guideline. This time I am going to just pick it up where it's going through a door. So now I have, um, please adjust, there we go. I have two guidelines for my windows. This could be the bottom windowsill and the top windowsill. You don't have to draw rectangles anymore. You could just use this at the top of your window and use this as the bottom of your window. Um, honestly, the most common mistake I see over and over and over when people do one point perspective scenes is they don't take the time to do guidelines and they just start throwing doors and windows in there. Um, you're almost guaranteed to have them be at the wrong angles if you do that. So please take the time to make the guidelines because once you do, um, then you just need to get your ruler completely vertical and go in and add the sides of your windows. So it's just a matter of drawing a parallel line in between these guidelines now. Um, if I wanted to, I could have this be a building shutter, this little extra space. So we'll, I'll do that with this one. Um, if I was really doing this for my final drawing, I would want to use my ruler to make those little hash marks that I did inside of the window shutter so that those lines line up perfect with my vanishing point. Um, probably what I would wind up doing is actually just erasing this little space in between my window and door. I could always go back in and draw something there later if I wanted to, but for right now I'm just kind of trying to build the basic structure of my buildings. So got windows, got doors. Um, over here you might get a little tiny window in beside that door. Um, one thing that's important to keep in mind is that we're moving farther and farther away as we go back towards the vanishing point. So these windows are going to start to look smaller. Doors are going to start to look smaller. Um, that's okay. We just want to make sure we line them all up with these same guidelines that we started with. So I'm going to go in and add the rest of my doors in this building, making sure to go all the way up to the same line that I had decided to use. Now, some doors in, in real life are a little bit taller than other doors, so um, when you're working on your final drawing, you can take the liberty to create slightly different size doors if you want to get that detailed. Um, but for this one, since it's our first one, we're going to just kind of keep everything uniform. So I can go in and erase my lines cutting my doors in half. Um, then I already have a line laid out that windows could fall along with, but um, some buildings are going to have windows that are much larger and some are going to be smaller. So you may find yourself creating another guideline that comes out so you can have windows at different heights. I think for today I'm just going to go with this same line that I've already made. Now you can see I'm cheating by not using my ruler. Um, I may regret that if I wind up getting lines that don't look completely vertical. Um, it's going to throw off my whole scene, and I don't want that. So I think for this one, I'm going to have my window be as tall as my door. So I'll erase that guideline. And then over here, I'm going to make it the smaller size. For this one, I'm going to have like three windows right in a row. And then I'll erase this guideline. That. And then as you get farther away in your buildings, you wouldn't see very much detail anyway. You can tell that my guidelines are really squished together here. It's going to be hard to get any kind of window or door in that space. Um, so when your buildings are far away, just leave those for right now. You'll probably end up adding the detail with just color um, or lights and darks, not necessarily shapes. 
Um, so we basically have our first row of windows and doors completed. Now it would be up to you to go in and fill in the tops of your buildings however you want to. Um, there may be apartments up there, so you might wind up dividing uh, this section into to an area where you could make windows. Um, some of these guidelines that we've already drawn, I will cheat and use them as signs. So if this was going to be a coffee shop, whoops, i to use my other pencil. I would maybe just draw my coffee logo in my sign space. It's a pretty decent coffee cup. And then I would know that this whole section is just the sign. So when I color it or when if I'm doing it in black and white, there might be like some simple pattern or something going through. And I know that that section alone is the billboard that tells me what this business is. Um, usually when I make these projects, I, I encourage you to not write words on your project or not very many words. Um, try to use symbols instead to identify these buildings. Uh, and the reason why I'm discouraging words is because if you put words on your paper, they too need to follow the, towards the vanishing point. So um, if this building was going to say, gosh, what could a building say? Bank. Um, if I have a bank word, I'm going to need to follow the guidelines too. So the bottom of my letters are going to follow this guideline. Top letters are going to get slightly narrower. So I, I would want to make sure that I'm following those rules for my, whoops, need an N, not a C. <laughs> um, and notice how once I wrote the word bank, um, it's just, it doesn't look as good as if I had drawn some kind of symbol for, to indicate what that building is. Um, oftentimes when people write words on things, it's mostly they're just labeling. They're not really trying to creatively write the letters. So if I wanted to do a word on my picture, I would want to make sure that I take the time to try to actually draw out these letters in some kind of way that makes it look appealing rather than just writing the word. Um, so I'm going to let you guys, this will be your assignment for over the weekend, go in and, and fill out the rest of your city. Um, add some windows up here on your second levels. So like this building I'm going to say has apartments up above. So I'll draw another guideline coming out. And then I will fill these in as windows. And then I could erase whatever I'm not going to use. Um, a couple more things I want to show you just before I let you go. I know some of you have places to be at 2.30. So um, this will be what you do on the left side and on the right side of your picture. Go through, add guidelines, make windows and doors. Make sure you have sides of buildings where they need to be. Um, and then let's talk just a little bit about the street. Um, this could be a gravel road, it could be a highway street, it might have two lanes, it might have four lanes. Um, one thing that you definitely need to think about though is that doors never open right onto the street. Um, there has to be some kind of sidewalk or something here separating your door and the bottom of your building from that street. Um, so the way that you would want to do that again is to start at your vanishing point and bring a couple of lines down. That's your most basic sidewalk that you can make. Um, you want to try to have these be both about the same size on both sides. And then sidewalks are not usually perfectly flat. They usually have a little bit of a lip that you have to walk down. So again, another line going from vanishing point. Now notice how as I get farther away, sometimes my lines actually run together. That's okay. Um, as buildings get farther away, we stop we would probably not see this little lip on the sidewalk at all. So um, it really needs to just be in the, in the first few buildings. Um, then you could go in and add, if you wanted to have like highway lines, um, broken lines, you could do that. If you do it, make sure that you think about how the one closest to you is biggest. Then it gets a little smaller, then a little smaller, till we might not even really see these at all either. Um, I kind of cheated. I didn't put my ruler down when I drew them, but you definitely want to make sure that that's in line with your vanishing point as well. 
Um, one last thing that I'll show you, and I would like you to experiment with this once you start feeling pretty confident with all that I've showed you so far. So this is pretty much the most basic one point perspective. Um, everything is very flat though. So if you wanted to have one building look like it was maybe just a little bit behind another, so there was different levels, um, you can do that by just going through and changing just a few things um, about where your building falls. So since this side is pretty much done, I'm gonna leave that alone and work over here. I'm gonna make this second building look like it's inset just a little bit. Um, that's actually gonna be really easy to do because I see the side of this building beside it and this is the front, this is the side. So all I'm gonna do is put my ruler down really close to the edge of these buildings, draw another line, and then I can erase this little part. Suddenly we see some side of this building now. Um, but then down here, I'm also going to need to make a tiny line that is parallel with top and bottom of paper, and then another guideline really close coming back. So it's, it's at my vanishing point, and then it needs to touch this edge too. So it needs to form a point right here. Oops, it's gonna be very hard to do because it's so small. Actually, let me make this back even just a little bit further so we can see it better. There, so now we're gonna do that same thing. Straight edge. Erase this extra stuff. And then another Ruler on the vanishing point, ruler on the point that we made down here. And then we can erase this little part. And it starts to look like this building is, is back. It's in just a little bit. Um, so that's something you can start to experiment with once you get the basics laid out, um, giving your buildings different depths. Again, it's just gonna make your scene look more interesting if you're able to do this. Um, we could do the same thing over here with this one if we wanted to. Um, if we wanted this one to look like it's farther back, part of it is hidden behind that building in the foreground, so move that line over. Oh, another thing I didn't show you. Um, I'm not gonna like this because these points would match up. I don't want that, so I'm gonna make this side of this building look like it's kind of like a stair step. I'm sure you've seen older style buildings like that that are tallest in the front and then they get a little smaller towards the back. So there's all kinds of little cheats that you can do once you start making these drawings to just to make it so you don't have to redraw everything. But um, so I'm gonna leave this line out here. And once I get all of these guides erased, it's gonna make it look like this building is back just a little bit. So um, feel free to experiment with different stuff like that. Um, you may find that you totally fail, especially since this is, most of you, this is your first time drawing one point perspectives. Um, I, I would not be surprised at all if you run into some issues and you just can't quite figure out how to make it look right. So that's okay. Um, but what I would like you to do before Monday is over the weekend, just go in and fill in whatever is left on your buildings. Um, make them as detailed or as simple as you want to. Um, if you do, if you try things like brick, remember that those are going to need just tons of guidelines going back to your vanishing point so that they can maintain the right angles. Um, but feel free to experiment with stuff like that. You can put siding on your buildings with just simple lines. Um, you can decorate your sky if you want to. If you want to try putting a tree growing from the sidewalk, go for it. Um, just see what you can do, but remember that anything that you do with your buildings is going to have to follow the vanishing point. Um, I'm not even going to get into cars or things on the street right now, but I would say just work on your city buildings for now. So please come back on Monday because we're going to talk about this again. Um, my plans for next week might have changed. I told you last week I'd be gone Wednesday and Friday. That might not be the case now, but I'll let you know on Monday for sure. So. Um, if you have any questions, you're welcome to hang back and talk to me about it. Otherwise, have a good weekend.